a Doppler effect here. It's related to a source generating sound which travels in a medium basically in all directions and uh, there is an observer which experiences that sound and we can have two specific situations. Number one, when say an observer is at rest and the source is moving. Number two, when the source is at rest and the observer is moving. And the general case, when they both move in different directions. Here, we can look at the situation, for example, when the source is at rest and the observer is moving. Well, in this situation, it's moving towards the source. And by some reason, the more wavefronts this applet generates, the slower it works. It's not the case in general. Yeah. A regular sound source doesn't change its frequency over time. However, here we can see that <coughs> A moving source well, encounters wave from traveling towards it, and of course, a number of wave probes it experiences per second is different. Well, with respect to a stationary situation, because well, uh, the velocity of the sound relative to the observer now is different. Okay? We have to add speeds together. And that's why the frequency changes. And we can easily say how it changes. If it encounters more wave fronts per second, the frequency is higher. And let's say an observer is running away from the sound source. In that case, <coughs> Boom, boom. Yeah. The frequency experienced by the observer is lower relative to the stationary situation. We need to understand when the frequency goes up and when the frequency goes down, because when we need to calculate the actual value of the frequency, we should choose the right sign. Sometimes we have to choose plus, sometimes we have to choose minus. And, well, if we understand what's supposed to happen to the frequency, we always can choose the right side. We'll see in a minute. So this is a situation with a moving observer. This is a situation with a stationary observer and a moving source. This ambulance traveling and uh, <coughs> making some sound. And we can see that in front of this ambulance, the wavelength, the distance between two adjacent fronts is shorter than behind it. And relative to a stationary situation, when the source is at rest, The wavelength in front of the source always is smaller than for a stationary case, and the wavelength of the sound behind the moving source always is larger relative to a stationary situation. Now, <coughs> since wavelength changes, we can say what should happen to the frequency. <coughs> When the pulse is made after that, the wave front is not related to the source anymore. It just keeps traveling in all directions, in particular to the right, towards this observer. And for this situation, the speed of this wave front, speed of the sound, relative to the observer, equals the speed of the sound relative to the ground. So, the speed, is the same as for a stationary situation. However, 
the wavelength decreases, that means the frequency increases. The frequency of the sound the observer experiences now increases relative to the stationary situation. And when <coughs> the source passes the observer. In that situation, the observer experiences a new sound. Now, again, the speed of the sound relative to the observer is the same as the speed of the sound relative to the ground, which is the same as for the speed of the sound for stationary source. But the wavelength increases, that means frequency decreases. And that observer now experiences the sound of a lower frequency, lower pitch. Well, <clears throat> this is again a situation for a moving source. You see, we don't even have an observer in this picture because. If we want to understand what's happening to the waves, the presence of the observer doesn't really matter. We just need to remember that if the source is traveling in a specific direction and making sound, in that case, the frequency changes because the wavelength changes. How? In front of the sound, it shrinks. Behind it, it widens. And depending on the speed, well, we can have different frequency, different wavelengths. We can look at this picture and we can actually say in which direction does it move. We can reverse the question. We can ask, okay, if we see this, how should the source be moving? Well, of course, we can answer it should be moving to the right because the wavelength is supposed to shrink in front of the source in the direction of its motion. Well, now, let's talk equations. So we know that <coughs> the most important fact for a case when the observer is moving is the velocity of the sound changes relative to the observer. For <coughs> moving source, they will changes, and if we combine all the equations together, the result is this. You saw it on Monday. Of course, well, the choice of this sign or that sign probably is the most confusing uh, point. Well, <coughs> we need to understand Simple mathematical fact. If you want to increase the frequency yeah. relative to the stationary case, what would you do? You have two options. You should either choose plus in the numerator of this fraction, or you should choose minus in a denominator of this fraction. In that case, you're multiplying the frequency of the stationary situation by a number which is larger than one, right? And if you want to decrease the frequency, you know it's supposed to be lower. In that case, you have two other choices. Number one, you either supposed to choose minus in a numerator, right? Or you're supposed to choose plus in a denominator. So this fraction would be less than one. And if it's less than one, you're multiplying this frequency by a number less than one, your result is smaller. So if you know from a physical consideration what should happen to the frequency, should it go up or should it go down, you're all set. After that, you just plug the number and fiddle with this. Well, of course, the actual situation is a little bit trickier sometimes. <clears throat> this is just another slide to uh, kind of help to Remember, in which situation, what should you use? Remember that the moving observer changes the relative velocity, and it 
reflect in a change in the numerator of this fraction. This is the speed of the observer relative to the ground. Oh, observer. The top of the fraction relates to observer, and many holes. And here, <coughs> the source changes the wavelength, and we reflect that change by changing the denominator of this fraction. So this is the speed of the source relative to the ground. V is the speed of the sound relative to the ground. Well, <coughs> the first special case, when the source is at rest, that means the speed of the source is zero, and the denominator equals one, for a stationary source, the equation is simpler, Again, we have to choose plus and minus uh, when observer travels towards the source, frequency will go up, so if you choose plus. When observer travels away from the source, frequency should go down, so we choose minus. This is my first question for today. Now, you see, the observer travels to, to the right. This guy walks around to the left. This guy walks to the right. So if you want to calculate the frequency experienced by this observer now, and we use this equation, the source doesn't move, what size should we use in this equation? Plus or minus? Of course, it's a regular pendulum, 
at the lowest point the speed kinetic energy is maximum. So <coughs> the highest frequency will be reached when the guy is here. Now how should it be moving to experience the sound of the highest frequency? Well to choose plus it should move it should be moving towards the speaker. So this situation describes a case when this observer experiences the pitch of the highest possible frequency. Now, lowest frequency. The lowest possible frequency is <coughs> reached when, again, this ratio is at its maximum. However, however, we have to subtract this number. So, again, when the speed is at its maximum, here. But now, to subtract to choose minus, this person should be moving away from the surface. So, the highest pitch and the lowest pitch both reach at the same point, number three. However, the direction of the motion is opposite. First time towards the speaker, second time away from it. You can ask any question at any time. All right. Well, this is a good practice problem. I'm going to ask you only one question out of many. What is happening here? So, Ben is holding a buzzer. Well, so sound waves travel in all directions away from the guy. Okay. And Max is traveling on a bicycle. So, the question is about the frequency of the sound experienced by Max. Since Max is moving, he is a moving observer. And since Ben doesn't move, that means the source is at rest. This is our equation. Which is basically can plug the numbers and solve. So, <coughs> this is the question I want to ask you. What do you think about it? So when Max is here, he experiences the frequency of a well, certain value. When Max was here, he experienced the frequency of the certain value. And of course, we can calculate the ratio of two numbers, just one number divided by another number. Which number do you think correctly represents this ratio? All right. Max, the observer, traveling away. 
away from the source. So the frequency experienced by Max at that point should be lower than the frequency for a stationary case. Should be lower. How much lower? We can plot the numbers and calculate the frequency. But well, basically we should say <coughs> one more note about notations. They might be very confusing. For example, this is not zero. This is an O. It means frequency of observer. This is zero. It means well, initial or stationary frequency. Sometimes a little s means stationary, but sometimes the same little s might mean source. So it's very important to keep in your memory what every symbol means. So here, this is the frequency of the stationary buzzer, 220. 220. And for the case A, we should multiply it by 1 minus this ratio. And that ratio is supposed to be uh, 1 for 100. But we don't have to actually calculate this number to answer this question. As I said, all we have to understand, this frequency is supposed to be lower. And here, when mass travels towards the source, well, wave travels towards max, this frequency sh should be higher than the frequency for the stationary case, which means the frequency A should be lower of the frequency B. So you have to choose the ratio FA over FB, which is less than 1. That's it. Which is this. So sometimes we don't have to do any calculations. We just need to understand what's happening. Well, <coughs> this problem is kind of inverted relative to a straightforward problem. What's happening here? Again, an observer traveling, and that's the speed of the observer, this number 10 meters per second. And this 340 is the speed of the sound. Now, the observer finds that this uh, truck makes a sound with the wavelength 0.5 meters. So the wavelength is 0.5 meters. As long as we said wavelength, first question to ask is, what kind of wavelength, wavelength is, 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 is it? Because we know in general situations, wavelength might change. However, since the truck is at rest, stationary source, that means the wavelength of the sound generated by the source in a stationary situation is the same as, well, experienced by this observer is the same as the wavelength of the sound relative to the stationary observer as well, if we have it somewhere here. <coughs> so, this uh, wavelength is supposed to be related to which speed? 10? 340? Neither. When the observer is running, that means the speed of the sound relative to the observer, uh, observer is different. So, the speed of the sound relative to the observer is supposed to be, well, it's either 330 or 350. What do we choose? When they travel towards each other, wave front and observer, so the relative speed goes up. If in the same direction, goes down. So for this situation, the speed of the sound relative to the observer is supposed to be 350 meters per second. And this speed of the sound relative to the observer is supposed to be related to this wavelength experienced by the observer and the frequency of the sound experienced by the observer. 
everything is supposed to be related to the observer. If you write the equation V equals lambda times F frequency, you have to remember all three variables must be related to the observer or to the source or to the ground. You can't mix up variables. You can't use speed relative to the ground, for example, and frequency experienced by observer if it's moving, you know, because they don't match. So observer, observer, observer. This is the most important point. Now we're all set. What's the frequency of the sound relative to the observer? We just said 350. What's the wavelength of the sound measured by observer? It's supposed to be 0.5. What's the frequency of the sound experienced by the observer? Well, at this point, we don't know it, but we can calculate it right now. So the frequency of the sound experienced by observer is supposed to be 350 over 0.5, which is 700. And the last question is, which frequency is 700 in this equation? This, as we said, is the frequency of the sound experienced by the observer. So this is this number. If you know the frequency of the sound experienced by the observer, this number, and if you know this is 10 and this is 340, what can you calculate now? Now you can calculate the frequency of this uh, source. This is the frequency which stationary observer would experience. Well, <coughs> so we would have to say 700 equals, for the stationary case, 1 plus or minus plus, it has closing, 10 over, now, what number should you write here? 350 or 340? This is the speed of the sound relative to the ground, 340. Well, now we just have to finish calculations. And uh, two more questions. So we just have found lots of stuff. Now, what if at 700 meters away from the truck, truck makes a pulse, and it will, so this is the distance, initial distance. The truck makes a pulse, how many pulses? They travel, observer keeps moving toward the truck. <coughs> so, how long does it take for, to the sound to get to the observer? Well, if observer were stationary, what would we do? Distance equals speed times time, so time equals distance over speed, that's it. And we would have to calculate 700 over 340 for stationary observer. But it's not the case. This guy actually is running. So the equation <coughs> still the same. Distance over speed. But what speed should we use now? Now we have to use the speed of the sound relative to the observer. Wave from travels in one direction. Guy travels in other direction. The relative speed is different. How different? We just said it's 340 plus 10 now. So for this situation, it's 700 over 350. That's how much time it takes to the wake front to reach the running observer. They close it and at some point they meet each other. So it takes two seconds. And how many Wavelengths were generated during this time interval. Well, the 
question is which frequency should we use to answer this question? The frequency generated uh, of the sound experienced by the observer or the frequency of the sound generated by the track? Well, <coughs> so track makes pulses. How much time does it make to make one pulse? There is a name for this word. We call it how? Period. And period is one over the frequency. So just two minutes ago, we have calculated that frequency, right? This is the frequency for the stationary case. Well, we kind of calculate. We did finish the calculation, but we plugged in all the numbers. So if we know that frequency, now we can calculate the period. It's the time between any two consecutive pulses. So if you want to calculate how many pulses have been made over two seconds, what do we do? We need to calculate this ratio, or we can just calculate this. This is a time interval, two seconds. And this is the frequency of the sound generated by the source and experienced by a stationary observer. Well, sometimes it's easier to actually imagine two observers, one which might be running and another which actually sits on a source. So there's a speaker or the ambulance or a buzzer or a fire truck. We can always imagine there is another guy which is right there. Here, there's a, oops, there's a person. There's a person here. So, and that person also, of course, can hear wherever the sound truck makes. So, <coughs> the frequency of the sound for this guy. That's what we sometimes call frequency of the source. This is the frequency <coughs> which a stationary observer would experience listening to a sound made by a stationary truck. And that's the frequency which we use in this equation. Well, <coughs> another special situation when the observer is at rest, the truck is moving, we know in that situation we don't have to change the numerator of this fraction, we just have to change the denominator. How? Depending on the motion. If <coughs> a source travels towards the observer, the observer is supposed to experience sound of higher frequency. How can we make this number larger, we have to multiply by a number greater than 1. How can we make a fraction greater than 1? Well, actually, this how. We have to decrease the denominator. How can we decrease the denominator? We have to subtract something from 1. So, <laughs> this picture is related to this situation. However, if the source would be moving away, in that case, the frequency of the sound experienced by the observer would be lower. And in that case, we have to decrease the fraction. To do that, we should increase the denominator. To do that, we should choose plus. Well, <coughs> similar situation. No question. Just let's think about it now. So, Max now has a buzzer here attached to it. So sound waves travel away from the moving max. And Ben now is a resting observer. So we should choose the right number for this ratio. No, 
I'm going to ask this question anyway. Let's see. Band experiences when max is at point A, and this is the frequency which band experiences when max is at point B, and we need to calculate the ratio. And you know the idea. Basically, we just need to figure out for which situation the frequency experienced by band is higher. And for each situation, the frequency experienced by a band is lower. Now the observer experiences 
the sound and measures the wavelength point five meter. The most important question now. If the truck was stationary, would be the wavelength of the sound, 0.5, or would be different? The question is, it would be different. This is the wavelength for a stationary case. This is the wavelength for a moving source. So this 0.5 is not this one. This is supposed to be maybe 0.5 something, maybe 0.6, a little bit larger. Well, how would we find that wavelength? Let's see what we could do. What, what else do we know? Well, speeds. So, we could use this expression. This is 10, this is 340. However, we don't know neither frequency for a stationary case nor frequency for a moving source. So we have to use this number in some way. How? Well, again, V equals lambda times F. What's V? Speed, lambda wavelength, F frequency. However, again, we cannot mix up variables. <coughs> so this is the wavelength experienced by, uh, or the sound experienced by the observer. So if you write everything relative to the observer, this is supposed to be 5. 5 times frequency experienced by the observer is supposed to be equal to the speed of the sound relative to the observer. The speed of the sound relative to the observer is it 330, 340, or 350 in this situation? This is my question to you. So, Stationary observer, moving truck. The speed of the truck is 10. The speed of the sound relative to the ground is 340. So what do you think about the speed of the sound relative to the observer? 330, 340, 350. Make your mind please because I have to erase these numbers. So, and now you can enter your answer. Equal 
to the speed of the sound relative to the ground, supposed to be equal to the wavelengths of the sound measured by the observer, which is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 times the frequency of the sound experienced by the observer. And now, well, 340 over 0 0.5, 680, this is the number we can use in our equation for the frequencies. And this is 10, and this is 340. And when the distance is closing, we should choose minus to increase the frequency. This equation now finally gives us the way to calculate the frequency of the sound for the stationary source or the frequency of the sound experienced by the guy in the truck. And if we know that frequency, the new frequency, we could calculate the new wavelength. Well, actually it's all wavelength, it's this wavelength. We just have to use now the same speed, because it is the same, an unknown wavelength, and this frequency, well, whatever number it is. And of course, we could also ask, uh, well, if the distance between the truck and observer is, well, 680 in this situation, how much time would it take for the pulse to reach the observer? Well, again, in this situation, so 680 meters, when the pulse is made, the motion of the source doesn't matter anymore. The pulse just keeps traveling, so it travels this distance, and the speed of the sound relative to the observer equals the speed of the sound relative to the ground, 340. So to calculate the time, we just have to calculate the distance divided by speed, which is 680 over 340, well, two seconds. And if you want to ask how many pulses have been made, well, you need to know this frequency. And the number of pulses will be, again, equals time divided by a period, or time times that frequency, this one. Well, and the, I'm going to skip a couple of problems. And the general situation, yeah, like this or like this, when everything is moving, you have a moving buzzer and you have a stationary. Bang, 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 bang. No, Ben also is running. So this guy on a bicycle, this guy runs. Uh, to the right, for example, like this. So you have to apply the whole expression now. And uh, again, depending on situation, you have to choose the right symbol, right? <coughs> so for example, let's say Ben runs to the right, max, right to the left, and uh, we want to figure out the frequency of whom. Depending on the answer, you have to use a specific combination of plus and minuses. So who is an observer? It could be a bet or math. You have to choose or you have to read. Here, there are all possibilities involved. Yeah. Frequency experienced by Max, frequency experienced by Ben, when, when Max is at point B, or when Max is at point A. So many combinations. If you know how to do one, you know everything. So let's quickly do one. Uh, let's do, what's this one? So, Max is here, and, uh, Right to the left, and then actually also 
travels to the left. So, and we want to figure out the frequency experienced by max. So, and I don't have time for that. I think, so, you can figure this problem. Have any questions? Use office hours. Thank you very much.